my name is April Sartell and welcome to my channel. Today what I'm going to be doing is just showing you how to make a really easy apron. This is going to be so simple. So I always wear a vest and I really don't want to have to always wear these vests while I'm sewing because it's kind of hot. Normally though you'll always find me whenever you see me I usually have a vest on. It's just who I am. I like that feeling. It's like having a scarf on. I like scarves. I just like that feeling. But, unfortunately, it's not working with me sewing um, as much as I do. It's not really helping me when I'm making videos because I'm always going to be in the best. Or I'm always just going to be covered with threads. So, what I've decided to do is I am not going to take any more time and try to get these threads off me. I've decided I'm going to try to start wearing aprons. So, here's one apron that I have. And I'm just going to... Um, look at this and I'm going to cut a pattern out according to this apron. So I've had this apron a long time. Years ago we used to cook a real lot. I did with the grandkids and um, I had aprons for all of them. I made them all aprons back before I even was really sewing sewing. I was still making aprons back then. For my youngest children I would make um, aprons for too. So this is just an apron I had had and whenever we would cook I always pulled up all of the aprons for everybody. So this one is falling apart. I don't want them like this anymore. I want to have a crisscross in the back. I've never made one with a crisscross. So I have been YouTubing and Pinteresting and just trying to look and see how are they putting these backs on. I'm going to experiment today. I'm going to try this. So I want to make a reversible one right now. And what I'm going to do is if I like it and it works for me, I'm going to just make a ton of them. And then I can start doing like my tutorials with an apron on. It's fine. It's just who I am. And I'm going to accept that because I don't really want to have a vest on during this whole time. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the an, an, just an apron and I'll try to draw around a little diagram. I don't have a pattern for this. It's just coming off this. So you can take a screenshot of it if you decide you want to do it. First, we got to see how this it comes out with the crisscrosses. So what you're going to need for this project is some pens, scissors, rotary cutter, ruler. I've got a pen and I've got some chalk. An iron and some tweezers and a little safety pin. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to trace out this um, this part here. I've got this folded in half and I've got it on top of the fabric that's in half. This is going to take for each piece, this is going to take about an eight, um, a yard of fabric. So just plan for one yard per side. So this is going to be one side. I want to try to do two sides. I'm going to see how that goes. I want to work my way up to making some linen ones because I love the look of those. But for today, I'm going to experiment with this one. I'm going to use blue chalk because the white's definitely not going to show up on this. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to, first of all, trace around with my blue chalk. You can use any sort of marking utensil. And you can use any kind of fabric. I've seen on all of these that I've been watching, they make them with canvas, they make them with cotton, they make them with linen, they make them with stretch. You can just use anything you want to. All right, I want you to see it. So let me try a different color here. I bought some friction pens on Amazon. I'll put a link to those below. I've never had the friction pens, so I'm excited to have that. I bought them in all the different colors here. And when you iron this, they're supposed to go right away. So I think I had one through time and I liked it. I decided to buy a whole set. All right, so there's that. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go about an inch all the way around to leave room because I'm gonna be turning this inside out and sewing. Just take your ruler and follow, follow it around and that should give you Follow it from your line and you should be able to follow this through. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut that out. I really don't need my ruler for this because I can just follow right along my line here. Okay, so piece number one is done. On this side, I am going to want to pocket the same exact size. So in a minute, I'll cut that out. First, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the reverse side. The reason I'm going two-sided is because I don't really need to wash this all the time, and I just want to have a different look. So I'm hoping if I make a variety of these, I will be able to you know, always have some different look, not always have to have the same look. All right, I'm going to do the same thing with the next piece. You're going to want your fabric pressed. You know, I think sometime I'm going to mimic this one. This is such a simple way to make it, and someday I'll try that. Maybe next week my friend's going to come over, and maybe I'll try doing it that way. I do plan on making a bunch of these, so... I'll just try it and see. But this way does look super, super easy the way they've got it here. But for today, I'm just going to go ahead and continue the way I was doing. So back in the day, I always watched Missouri Star uh, Quilt Company. And I always watched Jenny Doan with her apron. And I just love, I love that. So I always thought, well, if I do, did a YouTube channel, would I want to wear an apron? Just because you get so covered in, in uh, threads. And then I've decided, no, I'll just not bother doing that. But now I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to try it. What's it going to hurt? And I also used to love to watch Cheryl from the Sewing Room channel. She always had an apron on. And we'll see. Either I'm going to like it or I'm not. I just figured I'd take you along for the ride and explain when you start seeing me in aprons. It's funny because they had one on Amazon the other day. It was a, um, the linen kind. And it looked so good in the picture, but then when I saw it on people, it was just like, yeah, I don't think I dare do that. I didn't think I liked it all that much at that point. So I decided, whatever, I'll just try to make my own. So, okay, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to just trace my line here with my new friction pens. Oh, these are going to be so great, you guys. I don't know why I've never bought them. I think I spent $15, but I just, you know, you can spend 10 minutes to buy a house and you've got to spend, you know, hours and days of research of, do I really want these pens? <sighs> you know how that is. You get on there and you get, I've looked at them many, many, many times. So this was not anything I haven't already researched. But still, I had to still spend two hours to decide if I wanted to buy the pens or not. It's like, just buy the pens. I'm just using my ruler just to kind of hold me as straight as I possibly can get. I'm just going to go up one inch, about approximately, from that line. Okay, and maybe I'll just make some little dots here. Dot at my one inch marks so I can connect them. I'm leaving a lot of space because I'm going to go in and I'm going to make this reversible. So I need to fold it inside out and then pull it back out. So I want to leave plenty of space. I'm really excited for this. So next week, so I had invited my friend to come over. She doesn't really sew, but I mean, her and I have made, we've made lots of things together over the years, but she's just not into like sewing, like I'm into sewing. So I talked to her this morning to see if she wanted to come over and make some aprons. And she thought maybe she would, but she's definitely interested. She just got busy. So we might do it next week too. Maybe make some different type of apron. I've got one in mind that I want to make. Well, I'll tell you what it is. I, I am definitely making some patchwork uh, aprons. So 
If you want to follow along with that, get your scraps together and we'll uh, work with some scraps and make some fun patchwork ones. Again, I know I've said it already, but I'm just so excited to see if I like this. Then I don't have to wear these vests. But I'll feel covered up. You know what I mean? I just love the feeling of a scarf around me, too. It's really funny. My sister used to always be like, why are you wearing that great big jacket? You know, inside. It's like, I like that feeling. Something else I do want to make, though. I want to make the... Um, I've actually looked at here and there. I just want to make like a vest <laughs> sort of thing made out of really, you know, thin fabric. Uh, I think they're they also have caminos. I actually got a pattern for that quite a lot of years ago. I've never done it, but that might be something I'm going to work on because I like having overshirts. So that might be something I look into as well. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. So now we've got two. I need to do the pockets. First, I'm going to measure how big I want the pocket. I'm going to look at this one. I'm going to cut out two pockets at 16. I'll do 16 by 8, so I'll be able to um, fold that over for the uh, seams. I'm just going to press my pocket, and all I'm going to do I'm just going to fold this over all the way around. I'm going to fold it and iron it at a quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press that down. I'm going to do that all the way around. So I've gone all the way around and I folded it a quarter of an inch. And then I went around again and folded it all another quarter of an inch. That's going to give it that finished um, look when I'm done. Take your pocket and sew down just one side. This is going to be the top of your pocket. So go ahead, press your, put your presser foot under, and you don't have to go um, a quarter of an inch. You want to stay right on the edge, so probably about an eighth of an inch. Find a spot on your presser foot that works for you. Mine's going to be right here on the inside of my um, presser foot here, on the inside of the toe. I'm going to follow the inside of my toe is going to hit my fabric here. And that will give me a tack down edge, uh, top. So when I attach my pocket on, that part's already going to be finished. I'm going to back stitch and just Do that to both of your pockets and give that a back stitch. So I want to come in from the edge and three quarter inches on each side of my red line here. 13 inches down. So I'm just going to go 13 inches from the inside of this seam down. Okay. 13 inches down, and I am going to follow, I'm going to make a line. So 13 inches down brings me right over here to this line. Seven and three quarters, so right here. I'm going to put a dot, okay? I'm going to do the same on this end. Staying on that same line, seven and three quarters. Okay, and then I'm just going to make my dot, connect the dots. That's where my pocket's going to go. I'm just going to go ahead and give this a press right in the center. That way my pocket is going to be pretty centered. Let's fold this in half. I'm just going to mark this in half with my iron so I can see my mark on here. Now, as long as I put this mark with this mark, and I've got my straight line here, I should be good. All I'm going to do now, I'm going to pin, I've got my mark on my center line here, so I'm going to put some pins in. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of clips right here, and I'm going to put them about 8 inches because I'm going to leave that open. That way I know I'm going to start here and I'm going to end here. Okay. 
because I'm going to turn this inside out. So I've got right sides together, and I'm just pinning this around. The only thing I now I know what I would do different, I would have cut these out together. I would not cut these as separate pieces because they're not coming out equal. So next time I do this, I'm going to put right sides together of my fabric, and then I'm going to cut it out that way. That way I'm sure to be nice and even. But that's okay because all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to straighten this out and I'll just trim off any of this excess fabric. That's all I can do at this point. It's because I was measuring it just using the outside of my apron and I did that twice and then I added an inch and I came, <laughs> it came out different each time. So it'll just make it a lot easier next time. That's okay. I've actually never made an adult apron. I've always made just the kids' aprons. One of my daughters worked at AC Moore through high school and I bought a apron already made that was the adult one. I made all the kids ones, but um, what I did with the adult one was I just, we wrote Grammy on it because we were having all of our, starting our grandchildren then. It's funny because now the little boys are all here and the, another little girl and they don't have any aprons. So I might have to make them all aprons too, just to have them hanging. So I'm, if we ever do decide we want to all cook again, um, you know, we just haven't been doing that. So it's got to the point where they always, so the kids always come to my house for their birthday. They have a Grammy birthday, Grammy Grampy birthday sleepover. And um, it's, you know, it's a pretty big deal. They look forward to it. We get to do pretty much what they want, eat what they want. So um, what we used to do, though, is we used to make the birthday cakes. So now it's kind of, I buy the birthday cake just because of time. So what we have done, too, is we've bought the birthday cake and buy all the little goodies for them to decorate it. But it used to be... Um, a whole ordeal of the whole cooking process. It's funny how things change. You know, we might go back to that. I had every little, you know, gadget. I actually even put on Marketplace. I'm not a big one to put myself on Marketplace, but my daughter, I had a beautiful, um, you know, the big mixer, and I had had that, and we used to use that, but we stopped doing it, and it was taking up so much counter space, and I just, boy, it's really easy to buy a cake all made. <laughs> I never used to do that. My my children would ask, please, can we get a cake? And it was like, no, we're going to make one. They just were, you know, thinking how pretty those little birthday cakes were. Already made ones. But no, their mom had to be the mom that had to make everything. And not that it was, <laughs> believe me, it wasn't like it was anything special. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this to my sewing machine. And I am going to sew all the way around. Here's my front, is the other side, and they are right sides together, and I'm going to go sew this all the way around, and I'm going to remember to leave that opening. So I'll start here at the yellow. I've got my painter's tape. I'm going to follow my half an inch mark, and I've met my starting point following my half inch. Coming up to my edge, I'm going to give that a back stitch. That's the end point there. I'm going to stop there, pull my pit clip out, and break my thread right there. I'm just going to take my scissors, and I'm going to snip all around where the underarms are. I'm not going to cut into my seam. This will make it turn easier. And right here on this curve. Okay, I'll do the same to the other side. All I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut off all the corners and I'm not going to cut into the seam. I'm just going to stick my hand inside here in my hole and I'm going to pull this through. And I'm going to give it some shakes and I'm going to give it a press. I'm just going to take my finger and I'm going to follow that all the way around and make sure all of the points are pushed out. And I'm going to push the seam out as I go as well. So my fingers are right here just kind of dragging, pushing that seam out. I'm just going to pull the bottom seam 
I want to make that lay flat, so I'm going to pull those together so I can see both the top and the bottom. Just pushing it out so they're at the same spot, right on the outside. I'm also using the steam in my iron. Uh, here's where my friction pen, you can see that as soon as I put the iron on it, that goes right away. Here's where I had that open in. I want to seal that up, so I'm just going to fold that till it matches, till it matches naturally, and then I'm just going to go ahead and press that. And I'm just going to stick a couple of pins right there in that. You might want to have a pair of tweezers handy so you can just, if your points aren't pulling out, you can pull them out with those. There. Okay, I'm going to go back to the sewing machine now and I'm going to give this an entire top stitch all the way around. Okay, I'm going to put my presser foot down. I'm at a quarter of an inch now. And I've got, I'm going to take my pins out as I go, and I'm going to just seal up this edge of where I had had that opening. Top stitch all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and give it a back stitch right here at the beginning. When you come to the edge, just get to the quarter of an inch, pivot, and turn. I'm going to cut two straps, five inches by 24 inches. All I'm going to do for these straps is I'm just going to fold them over, and I'm going to sew a seam down each side. And then I'm going to be turning these inside out. I have a finished edge. Just fold the edge over toward the wrong side. Just that one, just to start you off and finger press that and then grab a hold of it so it's going to look like this. All right, and then you're just going to sew a quarter of an inch down. And the right sides are going to be touching each other. We're just doing these inside out. And just sew all the way down. And when you get to the other edge, just stop short a little bit and fold that edge over like we did at the beginning. And then sew right down. You can go ahead and give it a back stitch if you want to. And we're going to go back over and we're going to stick a pin in here. We're just going to turn these little tubes inside out. Now what you can do, just take your safety pin, stick it through. That's why we turned it over. Just stick it right through there. And then push it in the tube here. And just keep pulling over everything. You're like pulling it over on top of the other fabric. And here's my safety pin. And I'm going to pull it all through now. All right, I'm going to do that to both of them. See, by folding those edges in here when we were uh, sewing them, it just made it have that finished edge. We're going to need that in a minute. How we're going to attach these straps. So bring your seam to the middle of your strap. And give that a good press. Make it nice and flat. All right, take your straps, and we're going to go back to the sewing machine. We're going to do a top stitch all of the way around, even on the top and the bottom. And I'm going to get a bit of back stitch right there. All I'm going to do is I'm going to line my presser foot up, and I'm just going to sew about a quarter of an inch all the way around the whole thing, following my presser foot here. Just keeping that right on the edge. All we're going to do now, we're just going to attach this strap on. We're going to bring it right here to the edge. I'm going to bring it right to my seam. That's how I'm going to match it up. Like seam, the seam and the seam here are all meeting. I'm not really going to measure this. And I'm just going to stick a pin in there. 
So this strap, here's the front. I've finished the edge, so it's not going to look bad at all. This strap, I'm bringing it right here to the edge of to this corner. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to attach it right there to that seam. I'm just lining the seams up here, and I'll stick a pin in there. And I'm right on the corner, so I don't need to measure. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to line this up, this seam to this seam, and just into this seam. So it all lines up. Stick a pin. I'm going to flip it over. And I'm just going to take this one and I'm bringing it over here to this corner, but I'm going to flip it. So see how it comes right here to the corner and the seam? I'm going to flip it and go to the seam on here, on the inside. So the red meets the red. And I'm just going to put it again where the seams are. Okay, now that should do it. I'll see you at the sewing machine. I'm just going to sew from here to here, and I'm going to back stitch, and I'm going to go over this a few times. And I'm going to do this again. Back stitch, back stitch, and bring it right down. Back stitch at the end. And I'm over a little bit. That should be good and secure. There's two good stitches in there. And this is what it looks like from this side, see? I don't think that's going to go anywhere. I'm going to do that everywhere. Okay, here's what the stitches look like. And they're all on the red side. So I would say choose whatever side and stick to that one side, you know, straps on one side. And from the white side, it's going to look like this. I'm just going to snip all the loose threads, and I think that's it. I absolutely love how these came out. So now the only problem is, so I had cut my straps down to 24 inches because I was going to take and take them in and you know hem them up and twist them around so they came out about 22 inches if you're a larger person though 22 inches is just not enough so if this one is kind of small for me to do this again I'm going to add uh, quite a few inches to the to the straps I want this to fit really loosely I don't want it fitted anywhere I absolutely love it I love the crisscrosses, and I will be making a whole lot more of these for sure with much longer straps. So it's a reversible apron. Apron was super fun to make. I'm sure I'll be tweaking it and playing around with all different ways of making aprons. It was a lot of fun, and I definitely love the crisscross back. I really am excited to make some patchwork aprons. I will be doing that very shortly if you want to come back and watch that. That should be on, I think, next week I'll be doing some, some of those. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Remember to keep it simple. Have a nice day. Bye.